Uh, yeah, I am Esteban Gámez. Um, I study AMM, so um, Automotive Mechatronics and Management. I am in the last year, actually last semester, and I originally come from Colombia and yeah, almost two years here in Austria. That would be it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and uh, so we together uh, will do a short presentation on um, both programs and we also have uh, the study program director from uh, automotive uh, 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 mechatronics management, uh, Dr. Galbinger, with us, who will then answer questions if you have. Good. Do you want to say a few Hello. Words? Good to see you. Welcome to our show. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and as some of you might have noticed, uh, this session is then uh, also recorded, so to, don't uh, don't get scared by that. Um, yeah. So from the agenda uh, we have. So we will give a short presentation, I would say 20 minutes, probably 25 minutes or so, and then we'll answer your questions. So if you have any questions, just post them into the chat or just then uh, after we are done talking, uh, just uh, unmute your mic and, and uh, ask away. So um, I will share my screen so that you see what I am talking about. Uh, yeah, so we represent uh, University, uh, so we you represent the School of Engineering from our university, so it's in Campus uh, Wells, uh, which is a small city that is uh, located um, uh, between Salzburg and Linz. I'm sorry for that. Uh, just a sec. I have to, <laughs> I have a few technical difficulties. <laughs> um, I have to love the online setting. <laughs> So I think now it should work. Yeah. So sorry for that. So yeah, as I said, we are uh, from Campus uh, Wells, which is a school of engineering here, and uh, it is a relatively small city. So 60,000 people uh, in between Salzburg and Linz. So it's a relatively well located for all the fun stuff you can do in Austria, hiking, going to lakes and traveling to uh, bigger cities in the area. Um, and the school of engineering. So we have a relatively wide range of um, relatively wide range of um, bachelor and master programs uh, and we will focus on our master programs here. So the campus is uh, we have roughly 2000 people, so 2000 students here and 20% of them are international students. So uh, from over 70 countries, so it's a relatively fun mix of people uh, that we have here um, and uh, always a very good represent representative mix. Um, and uh, so we have 80, over 80 full-time professors, which means that we have quite a lot of people who actually full-time work uh, with the students all the time, uh, which offers us, uh, gives us a chance to have a very practice-oriented education uh, with relatively small class sizes. So our groups uh, in both master programs are roughly 20 to 30 people, which means we really, um, professors can really take the time and, and address all the individual needs that our students have. Um, and we start once a year, so the welcome week is usually the last week of September, uh, which is like a get to uh, know the university, get to know the region, get to know each other kind of week and like how the pro programs work in Austria. And then we start our school year or academic year, usually on the 1st of October. Um, so why? Why we think uh, it's worth sitting uh, in Wells and, and, and at the um, University of Applied Sciences Upper Austria. Um, first of all, we have a very fixed length of studies, which means that um, contrary to how it is usually done in the university, so once you start, uh, you know that if you work well, uh, you will be done in two years. Um, we have, um, sorry for that, I don't know why my presentation keeps doing this. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, relative small groups, as I mentioned, which means that we have uh, the opportunity to individually tutor our students and um, work in modern labs. Uh, we also are a very practice oriented school and especially both of our programs, uh, which means we have a lot of cooperation with industry. So you get to know your future employers very early on um, through different internships, through also field work. So going to the companies, visiting the companies and also doing a few projects for the companies while you are studying, which is, I think is a great way for students to get to know the companies, get to know their culture, also get to know different professions and areas and departments of the companies. Mm, we also offer language courses at various levels. So me personally, when I came to Austria, I mm, 
spoke German roughly on a level of like B1, which means you can order a coffee or beer, uh, but not much more than that. Um, and um, I managed to learn German partially throughout the, partially through the courses that are offered at the university um, in the evenings. Um, and we have very good support structure for international students through our um, student ambassadors and buddies, which um, Esteban will talk a bit, a bit, uh, a bit uh, more in detail uh, later. Um, yeah, so we have three different three main study areas in our university. So engineering and technology, which are kind of hardcore technical uh, technical uh, programs where you really focus on different areas of engineering. Uh, we have energy and environment. And then in the middle, we have this engineering and management program, which is where we are located. So we have um, both innovation pro and product management and automotive and mechatronics here um, and th those are both offered in English so we are very welcome uh, welcoming international students um, in both of those programs. So Esteban the stage is yours. <laughs> okay hi so uh, once again um, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about automotive mechatronics and management. Uh, it is a master program First and most important thing is totally uh, thought in English. So yes, as you can imagine, it's uh, like us international students are very welcome. In my case, which is actually the people from the picture, uh, we were from five different continents, I think 13 different countries or something. So uh, that creates a very uh, intercultural environment where you're working and, and learning and, and that's that also adds to the experience. It's not only about learning uh, all the courses that you're doing, but also uh, for life and, and working experience, it's really, really valuable to learn how to, uh, yeah, to, to, to deal with other types of culture and people from other backgrounds. So that's super important. Uh, about the focus areas, I mean, uh, they are there uh, listed, but uh, drive terms and immobility, e we, we learned, of course, a lot of how the traditional vehicles work and how are the traditional uh, internal combustion engines working, but also about e-mobility, uh, something that I, I, I always tell the people who are interested in AMM. For me, uh, one of the most important things is that um, it is a very modern program. So like the stuff we learn is uh, very uh, future oriented and, and what it's actually going on in the industry right now. And that's, of course, uh, e-mobility. Informa informatics, assistance system, driving assistance system. So all these new things that are coming up on, on modern vehicles uh, that that are the future and that that's the, uh, where the development is going to go. Uh, we also learn about the model based engineering, of course, all, uh, how to model uh, um, these models behind all these new features. Um, and not from the uh, let's say a uh, managing part of the program it's more about quality management innovation marketing and accounting um uh yeah so this is uh, also focused like in project management uh finance controlling and uh, a little bit of economics and um yes it's it's now that you have somehow this uh this knowledge about mechatronics uh then this helps you also on how to how to uh, to lead in, in a project uh, about yeah in a mechatronics project or something similar social skills as i mentioned um yeah i think i i already talked a bit about it but just being in a university where with people from more than 80 countries um it really brings a lot of value to the experience of studying um next slide please well, relevance, um, I mean, the vehicles, uh, let it be road cars, a tractor or a race car or whatever, uh, they stopped being a pure mechanical machine kind of a long time ago. Right now, all the all, the, all these vehicles are more than just that. They are a very, very broad combination between mechanics, electronics and software. And that's why, again, I come up with, with the phrase that I said that it's a really uh, future oriented program because in the future, the competitiveness is going to be it's going to be defined by the mechatronic systems and how they work in the car and how well they perform. And that's that's uh, the main focus of, of the program. And, and that's why, let's say, as the name implies that it's relevant. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Um, companies what it's looking right now it's 
how to integrate all these technologies together. I mean, when we started looking at cameras in the rear of the cars, uh, cameras existed forever, but then someone took all this, in, this uh, took a vehicle, took a camera, and then they put them together to create these new features. So uh, we are very focused on, on yeah, how to implement all these uh, existent or future technologies and uh, making it a, a, a new component that it's uh, yeah, much more advanced than, than what it was before. Uh, next one. So of course, the career path, I think, I believe that there, there are like these three main paths that you can follow. The first one is a uh, development engineer, um, let's say development engineer for mechatronic systems. That's a very long name for yeah, developing mechatronic systems in the companies. Uh, we are focused more on the system level, so like system design or, or system integration. Uh, so that's a little bit of a higher level. Um, and yeah, so for example, personally, I am working right now uh, in a pre-development uh, area and they they do a lot of this uh, system integration. They take some other technologies and then they create a new one. Also, of course, uh, verification and validation of, of all this. So a lot of testing. We learned a lot about that as well. Um, project leadership and management, uh, as I mentioned, I mean, it's also a management uh, program and uh, to, to really lead all, or to manage all these projects that, uh, that are going on, uh, you not only need uh, yeah, all the technical knowledge, but also the management pro, pro, the management knowledge. And the idea is that you can lead a, a, a mechatronics uh, project uh, after graduating from the program. Also, something else is automotive quality management. Um, this goes beyond the, the uh, let's say, traditional quality control, uh, that it's just checking if uh, products are properly produced or not, but more on, on the quality management, like how the process around the company actually ensure that the quality in the pro that there is the correct quality in the products. Um, next one. Okay, so practice-oriented curriculum, that's also something that personally I, I believe it's very important. Um, our, our, our program is uh, yeah, very practical oriented and one of the, the features of that is that it allows us to work from the second semester um, in a company. So there are two days a week that are completely free, that are like locked, that there is no classes that day. And the idea is that you get the opportunity to uh, find a company where you can work, of course, part time and, and and work on on yeah on the automotive industry so you can while you're studying you are also getting some some work experience um sorry i have some noise um also well what you see here it's uh, our curriculum um i mean i'm not gonna go through each of the courses that we do but there are like some areas uh, of course that the projects that i mentioned um, the, there are the cultural leadership classes, there are the management courses, there are the automotive, uh, automotive IT, uh, information technologies uh, of the cars, so like the modern architectures uh, and electronics and, and electric architecture of the vehicles. And also, and there is also the vehicle components and, and systems. It's, that's also more uh, architectural part. And the last one, but not least, uh, model-based engineering so how to this is a uh, very yeah uh, it's more mathematics oriented on how to build the mathematical models behind uh behind the uh, systems in in a vehicle or or any anything else next one okay now some pictures uh, a little bit of more fun stuff um we go to a lot of we i mean right now we're in corona but uh, and we cannot go to do any of this, but before we used to go to to the company, to, to for example, manufacturing facilities of, of some of these companies, or, um, <clears throat> or for example, the first uh, picture to the left, uh, up left, that's in, in, the, in a project that was sponsored by Audi. It was at this car that you see there, it's an autonomous car, and the, the university has uh, worked in this, I think, for the last three or four years. Um, yeah, we were also in the Porsche Museum that's in Salzburg. We, we've been in KTM and uh, uh, yeah, meeting all these companies that that also that's also very important that you see how somehow uh, these companies are working in real life. 
Next one, please. Um, yes, yeah, so this is a little bit more of that. We do also, when you see in the pictures, uh, there is an international night that we do in the in the university, and uh, everyone from their countries they bring some food or some drinks, and then they share with everyone. Uh, for example, the picture top right, uh, that's with, I believe at that moment, was the managing director of Audi. Uh, I forget his name right now. He gave us also a class in innovation management. Uh, it was a really, really nice seminar. It was uh, one complete day and yeah, he taught us a lot as well. And Professor Gavinger, which is, you already met him. Um, and yes, I think that will be it from AMM. Or is there another slide? No. no, I think there is. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. OK, then, um, yeah, we, we'll answer all the questions after uh, the presentation. So let's go to the second program, which is innovation and product management, uh, which is also a four semester master program entirely taught in English. So the first thing um, that I get asked quite frequently is what, it, what exactly is innovation management and what, who are innovation managers and product managers. So those are the people who kind of initiate and manage all the product and service innovations in the company, starting from how do we generate ideas for new products and services to how do we build a business case for them? How do we actually develop them? How do we set up our production? How do we market them? How do we launch them? So this is what we try to cover. So those are more, uh, uh, it's a more general master program uh, who prepares the future innovation and product managers in a big part. Um, so our focus areas in order to do that, in order to really educate people who have those functions in the companies, we have uh, five focus areas, which is the first one is innovation management, where we talk about different tools, how to manage innovations, how do we come up with ideas, how do we organize creativity, how do we organize knowledge transfer. Uh, then the second focus is marketing and product management from uh, very basic marketing tools to international marketing to key account management. Then we have a few subjects on engineering and technology so that our people uh, at the end of the program can actually uh, have a conversation with the development uh, department or the R&D department and can manage people in those departments. Uh, then we have industrial design subjects. Um, it's obviously design focus and last not but at least very similar to IMM. Um, the final focus is on social and intercultural skills, taking into account how diverse the world is at the moment and that we are um, have to be flexible and resilient and be able to work in teams and especially in intercultural teams. And um, IPM in general, so we have those five focus areas and we have a lot of subjects in all, for all of the students on, in these five areas. And then in addition, we have two specializations that students can choose from. Uh, one is product concept design, and the second one is development process engineering. So our study program is organized in a way that the first semester gives an overview of all those areas. And it's like called the so-called bridging um, semester or the bridging course semester, uh, where you get introduced to all five areas here. And then after the first semester, you have to choose your specialization specialization, so either product concept design or the development process engineering, and you spend two semesters within your specialization, and then the last semester is the internship and a master thesis. So our um, uh, framework for, for how we organize our courses, so we uh, like to look at it from as like this very classical innovation management process starting from the strategic direction of the company so what do we actually want to do as a company and which markets do we want to address which products do we want to uh, produce and which services do we want to offer uh, to how do we generate ideas and then how do we actually launch them and and how do we take um, the products and services off the market and so all our subjects are structured somewhere along with this line with uh, the yellow ones being the classical management and marketing subjects then um, a few strategic design courses that are mostly uh, located at this front end or the earlier stage in this process and then um, the engineering courses and this um, yeah engineering uh, process um, and the yeah, engineering course is located all along this line. So for two specializations, so once you have your first semester and you have looked at, okay, what is in there and what are the options, um, you usually get a feeling for like, hey, for 
you get a feeling for okay this what is more suitable for you as a personality and for you of which subjects you enjoy more and the first option is this um, product concept design specialization which at the end um you you are a product concept designer as a person who can um design mostly industrial products and can think about the aspects and factors that have to be taken into account when designing products. So they are um, the courses that are included in the specialization are uh, prototyping different drawing techniques, uh, a bit of design theory, a bit of strategic design, uh, obviously computer aided industrial design, things like that. And then it is very practice oriented course. So you also have to do uh, multiple design projects through which you actually learn this specialization and at the bottom of the slide you see a few visualizations from our previous student projects so um, a typical design project could be something like this like make a design for a foldable bike for instance here uh, or oil, oil spill system or different um, products of uh, our industry partners um, the second specialization is the development process engineering. So here at the end, uh, you get the knowledge on how can you, you can coordinate new product development activities in the company. So that means you are the person who knows how to organize this process so that all the suppliers, the development partners are involved, the customers are involved. And that includes usually a range of different activities starting from really conceptualizing how those processes look like, figuring out how the information should flow. Um, you also learn how to carry out visibility studies and how to overlook people, like how to uh, uh, yeah, control those processes and monitor those processes um, and how to yeah, analyze existing approaches within the company and how to develop future oriented solutions. So the courses here are more on the technical side or on the more of the technical spectrum of our um, on the technical side of our kind of course spectrum and we have virtual and augmented reality here, product lifecycle management, um, reverse engineering, digital factory, uh, research and development, controlling and things like that is what you would learn in this specialization. Um, so what type of career do our um, alumni usually have? So we have actually a very wide range of uh, um, professions uh, among our alumni. So a lot of our alumni go for uh, strategic innovation management positions or technology management positions, which are uh, very much required in um, industrial companies uh, in the region uh, that we are located in. Um, some of our students choose uh, an international marketing career or product management career. Um, and then some of us, uh, some of our um, alumni obviously go for either really this uh, design um, design professions, which would be either technical designer uh, or design manager. Some of them start their own companies. And then um, a few of the people also end up in the development, so in R&D departments and um, become product development engineers or R&D process engineers. Uh, what is new and uh, was this a potentially also a career and what we have seen in the last few years uh, is the agile coach, which is um, um, more and more required um, position or profession in, in some of the companies uh, in Austria and Germany, I think also worldwide, um, that those are the people who help um, and who coach development teams and marketing teams uh, uh, in, and on this journey to how to come up with successful product and service innovations. And we offer, in addition to the IPM program, our students have the opportunity to um, get certified as agile coaches. So they learn all those ways that are required, uh, all the tools and methods that are required for agile coaches in the company. Um, and last but not least, a few impressions from, from IPM. Um, so we also do a lot of excursions to the companies uh, to see how they operate and uh, to meet the potentially future <laughs> employers or at least places where the students do their internships. Um, we organize a lot of guest talks and e industry expert lectures so that we get this up-to-date content 
from the real world, so to say. Um, and we try to incorporate as much fun activities as we can to, to also learn uh, sometimes not so very exciting things as theory. So we do a lot of, um, sometimes we learn through Lego, sometimes we learn through board games, um, sometimes we learn in different locations, such as like uh, here, which is like a special format uh, outside the school where you spend like a week working with people from other campuses um, and so on. So we try to, um, entertain our students as well as be the best we can um, and uh, also in this program you are part of a very tight-knit um, international group which is uh, usually very very um, much fun um, yeah so that's actually all on the formal side of the presentation Esteban uh, hi again. Um, maybe just one more thing before we go uh, to to the to the questions about the a student ambassadors program. Um, I am personally one of those. Uh, basically, what we do is, I mean, I, I also went through this process. You might have a million questions just before uh, starting your program. So um, the easiest way to to ask the, those questions is to someone who already went through those, right? Um, so here in this program, you can send an email to this uh, to this email in, in the screen or you will find it in the in the website of the university super quickly just uh, ask for for a student ambassador or ask the questions and usually what the uh, person who receives these emails is that they see your country and if for example you're a spanish speaker uh, you will be maybe sent to me uh, i come from colombia so i receive a lot of the latin american students for example and I will try to answer you as many questions as possible. Sometimes if uh, yeah, any issues that you might have, we, we try to, to, to help you with that. If it's asking professors anything, if it's even uh, possible, uh, we will try to do it. Uh, after student ambassadors, let's say you got accepted in the university, hopefully, and then you arrive here, then we have a, something that is called the body program. So then you are assigned a, a body, which is a person who will help you with again with all this process but adapting yourself to the country so the first student ambassador is mostly focused on um yeah application process and arriving to the country and the other one is let's say afterwards uh you will have also a lot of questions of where is the supermarket and stuff like that um so the body can also help you uh, you can also contact the international office uh, of the school of engineering the uh, international uh yeah, you see the email there. They will also uh, send you a person who will help you with all of this. Um, I think that will be it. Now, maybe yes, the questions. Yeah, so if you have any questions, then we would be very happy to answer them now. So you can either just um, unmute your mic and ask away or just write it into the chat. Mm -hmm. We are also going to stay here uh, for some time more, so yeah.